gonna get sick after this week and it's gonna be your fault. <laughs> what are you doing? She, just, she thinks she's funny. Say it, Robbie. Say it. <laughs> Say it. You, don't, you need it. Say I you need, you need it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it. You're done. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Between stages one and two, my parents visited me for my birthday. They got to watch our last game, and I mostly just spent like all that time with my parents and my brother because it's like I can only spend so much time with them. Like I, I can play ranked or practice whenever, but I can only spend time with them while they're here. So it just made a lot of sense to spend as much time with my family as possible. We had a bye week, so we weren't too pressured to be like. Uh, ready to go week one. We only took a little bit off and then we started scrimming right away. So during the stage, like we're, we're spending pretty much all of our all of our free time practicing or preparing or personal training, stuff like that. Anyway, our whole life revolves around Overwatch, right? Six days a week, we start, you know, 11 in the morning, we're done 8, 9 p.m., right? And that's that's our that's a regular day. We have, we have review, we have scrims, we have, um, and after that you have like your personal grinding responsibilities where you're playing ranked at home or whatever and so it's it's all day long so the, the then you have the break where like you, you can take that time off so you don't get burnt out right so I, playing so much really it, like you can get burnt out and like it happened to us last year last year we we didn't really um, especially in like our first stage last year we, we we kind of were we didn't take days off sometimes we, we would do like two Three weeks straight, no days off, no same same, same kind of schedule. 12 hour, 11, 10, 12 hour days, and you do get burnt out, right? And uh, eventually, like your practice turns into autopilot almost. You're not. It's hard, so hard to focus and, and pay attention. And we didn't really consider that element initially, but I think we, we've kind of grown in our practice and become more efficient because of that. Um, it was pretty easy to get back in the swing of things. Just like a couple, like one day of like getting back into it, like a little bit rusty. But then after that, it felt like I usually do. It felt nice to like take all the problems of stage one and throw them out the window for a little bit and not have to worry about it for a while and then like bring up how we want to fix them later. I felt good to like sort of ignore those and just like do whatever like you could to like better yourself or just chill if you need to take a step back and like remember that you have a life outside of the co competition. But I feel like it was just, I don't know, it felt good to just take a step back. I mean, a week of practice is you, you your coaches will outline your goals for the week, right? You, you, you try to focus on things that you can tangibly work on, you know, like some kind of default positioning, um, like rollouts when off your respawns, things that you, Tangible goals. I think that's really, really important to be productive. So we'll have an outline for the week what we want to focus on, what we think that, what we learned from the previous week. So you take like the data that you learned from the previous week, try to digest that into like something tangible to work on for the following week. So we'll have a meeting in, in the morning, um, outline for the week, discuss stuff that we want that we want to do, and then we just go into the scrims and try to focus on that. Like looking at VODs, seeing what our team's tendencies are, trying to fix like our problems, as well as you have to look at what the other team's gonna do, what they're gonna run, how they're gonna run it, if they make any like mistakes that are common, and try and exploit those. Okay, they, they use ally, if they drop, we rush hard, okay? I'm punching right already. I'm punching. Zen or Diva's bottom left? I mean, I think still have a in How are you feeling, boy? Good. I know it's some newbies. That's her. So I'm glad we're getting staked in 4 0. Yeah. That's what Flame says. We'll see. Playing doesn't pay up sometimes, but. Eh. Because their opponents are a team yet unseen here in stage two. Let's hear it for the Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws doing a good job of protecting their vulnerable DPS in this round. Oh! Nice shot on a Twilight. 
It's midnight now. <laughs> Links are getting chased up by Bumper here. It's the twilight of his life, I guess. I guess so. It's over. Outlaws. They're holding, man. They're getting the kills. I think they might take this round. They will. Houston Outlaws taking a lead on Busan over the Vancouver Titans. Nicely done by the Outlaws. This is what we wanted to see from them coming into this stage. Yeah. We're doing it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Lynx has been really taking names on the Soldier 2 all around. Oh, good. It's always a good meta where Lynx can play the Soldier. Stitch in trouble too. Man, there's nothing he can do. He's got the biotic field. He can just heal through the damage. Chandu taking a lot of damage too. Lynx are popping off, man. On the score. Oh! Gets the elimination on the mech. Dante Fish. Oh, oh there goes Slime. <laughs> Lynxer. Lynxer just Back. popping off right now. Oh, oh, I swear. What is going on? Why are They're they just fighting Jiri? Why are they just fighting Jiri? <laughs> Won't be one again. Yeah, they had to use the EMP though, and now we're yeah. gonna have Boink here. Gets hacked during his Valkyrie. Oh, there's the EMP. Gets three members of the Titan Talks all first to fall. Outlaws trying to hold on to this one. They're still gaining percent. Another hack on the Stitch as he lays down, gets taken out eventually as well. And now it's just Arhan charging forward with the ultimate. He's sliming them. That's right, trying to keep the team alive. The ectoplasm flying everywhere. All the tours back, we're in. We got the lava. Oh, yes, oh the, the green juice! The green juice! Scotchy face, scotchy face! Arhan's sick, yeah. And they can't put control of the point. Uh, ben Houston might get this 2-0. They're going to be above 80%. They won the point. Grab their way to him. Fight win and then hold the points. It's going to be crazy. We're in overtime. Ready? And Linkser gets a kill on the bumper. And there goes Slime. Tactical visor. And that is going to be it. The Titans oh, nice. for, oh, for Houston and Busan. Out of the point. They do touch. There's a grab coming in. Doesn't get eaten. Point down immediately again. Cool, Matt. Very low health. Gets d as soon as Azaria's shield is off. There goes Muma. And that is going to be a full hold for the Titans. He's a human microwave, although you don't have to be inside it, so macrowave, I don't know, but he's gonna go down anyway. Doesn't matter. Bumper just chilling out on the point, and that's the end of the map. CMP gonna hit four members of the Titans. Got a lot of ultimates to use too, and that's gonna be another hold for Houston. Gonna delay this even longer. They're really doing a good job of eating up a lot of time for the time bank right now. Oh yeah, they're doing a great job right now. See if the Titans can do that, but that's a great anti heal on the Titans. That had a grenade. Denying a lot. Twilight down already. Mooma with another kill there. Kumat gonna pop the self destruct. Get back, back. Found Janu as well. Trapped it in the corner. Hawksaw just takes the dive. They're gonna reset. And it's a great hold for Houston so far. Yeah. Because the sleep guard on the Mooma prevented so much uh, pressure that they had the outlaws out on the back oh, line. And that great. is huge! Huge! He's got the EMP. Yep. Mooma has to come in and save them. I right, gets a primal rage. Oh! oh. No, Dante! I'm sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 What a f monster. Oh, no, Arhan's a one. Why? He died. Part, part. We got it, we got it. Hey, he can boop the monkey off. The payload. We got to stop him. He nearly gets it there again. Arhan down. And this is what I'm talking about, man. Yeah, he can push Houston out of their comfort zone. It gets rough. That said, Houston turning it right back around on the Twilight cover off of that EMP from Dante. Twilight didn't get hit by the sound barrier, so now the outlaws, they may be able to hold here. Bumper down, John New down, they've lost their tanks. Someone suit gets Arhan, but nice boot! Uh, Slime does try, but boink, the better Lucio in this case. That's gonna be a great hold before he is taken from the Houston Outlaws. Self-destruct, no kills out of that one. Kind of following Mulan oh, around. Gets that's stunned! Huge! Gets taken Bion out! Bionic grenade into stun! That was big, man. Cool man, d back Slime down though, Houston overcoming the Titans in this fight on A. Looks like this is going to be all they need to take point A. Right. Mind games. Oh, oh shatter, what a shatter, Bumper. everybody but boy. That was a five-man shatter from Bumper. Gets two with the charge immediately. Here comes a grab, but it is too late. And as overtime expires, hey, it's going to be the Titans taking this map. Cool Matt managed to last a little bit longer than everybody else, and Boink is still there. Another shatter from Bumper. He's just got it all the time. Charge takes Arhan out again, and they can't get back to the payload. The lead taken by the Titan. Another shatter locked and loaded, waiting for a chance to use it. There it is. Both of Ryan's shatter simultaneously. He will knock down, but John, who gets raucous with the self destruct moment down as well. And even though Kumak got that kill on the Twilight, it is all Vancouver Titans here on point A. Party in the self destruct. Because this round 
is over. Goodbye, Boink, and the Houston Outlaws getting denied before they take A, right? Cool Mountain self-destruct. They're gonna live through it. Trying to keep pushing forward here. Twilight with yet another transcendence, and that's a four-man self-destruct from Janu to finish this one. That is it. It is over. Titans take it 3-1. For Vancouver, we, we treat it like every every other match, right? We we watch their games, we, we we focus on the maps that we're playing, we try to have a plan for each, and set in place for each map. Uh, contingencies, you know, if, if 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 this is failing, then what else can we do? And sometimes, like you have these plans in place, and you still fail, right? Um, we had, if you looked at like our, our Paris, uh, was very poor, but I think on the other maps we had a pretty good showing, and I think that our, our prep was was good overall for Vancouver. Vancouver just like the best team, you know, they're a very strong team. I think overall we still had a strong performance. Like if you look at our um, our Busan, like. Busan was very good. Our Eichenval was was very close as well. So our prep is generally like it's it's nothing too uh, like esoteric. It's just VOD review, strategy, plans, you know, contingency plans. So it's like it's we have a basic system in place. We, we try to be creative, but then like there's just sometimes that you can't be creative. Like Busan's a very good DPS map and like very good for other comps that are like non goats. So it's easy to be creative on that map because it, the map just allows you to do that. People don't really understand that like, you just can't be creative sometimes. You just have to play the meta. It's like people are like, oh, just play what you're good at. But it doesn't really make sense. Like that'd be like last season saying that, oh, you don't have a good Mercy player? Oh, you just play Lucio. Like you need to play the meta. Like you'll just be at a big disadvantage if you don't. And there were a lot of teams last year that didn't have good Mercies. And it's not like you just say, just play Lucio. Like, you just lose if you play, if you don't play that. It's the first match of the stage. I don't think people were too high on us from stage one, but it is what it is. I don't, I don't think we felt like super unconfident. I think we knew Vancouver was one of the best teams in the league, but it's not like we're gonna diminish ourselves because they're one of the best. We're still gonna play our game. We're maybe gonna tailor our game a little bit more to against them, but we know we could win. And clearly we shoot, we showed we could win. We got one map, we almost got another. And then map five could have been ours too because we won the control. So like, if we would have won those two maps, maybe we somehow end up taking the series. I mean, if you look at our Busan, I think that goes back to um, the efficacy of, our, of our, our preparation, right? So our Busan, we, we come out with like a really unique comp. I feel like, and I think that they played really poorly into it. You know, they, they didn't know what to do. Like, Linkser was able to like run circles around them because they had no idea what to do against it. You know, they, they hadn't seen it before. So that's just an example of like our creative like preparation and action.